Just before the Thanksgiving holiday, I noticed two of my lights were not working. I have a mix of Ecotec Radeon Gen 2 and Gen 4 lights, and they've been running without many issues for the past six years. But it's time to update the tank, and that includes the lights. I did some troubleshooting, lights are expensive after all, and found that somehow two of the ballasts were dead. It's very odd that two would go at the same time, but that's what happened. Maybe a power transient or something like that that I didn't notice. I've been thinking about an upgrade for a long time. I particularly wanted some of the newer lights that are totally silent. Things like the Philips Coral View Gen 2, or the ATI Stratton, or other lights like those. On an older tank, I had an ATI power module full of T5 lights, and it was great. So I had a good experience with the quality delivered by ATI. Philips, on the other hand, actually makes the LEDs. Like Kessel, they have complete control over the fixture, all the way down to the diodes, and I like that idea. Everyone else is buying LEDs, and then building around them, ATI and Ecotech Marine included. I read a bunch of reviews on Reef to Reef, and when it was all said and done, the ATI Stratton stood out to me as the best pick for my tank. They have a clean, modern design, they have the power to cover my 36-inch wide tank front to back, and they have a lot of other nice features as well. I bought these lights on sale from saltwateraquarium.com, and they quickly shipped. I was impressed with the packaging, and the lights were shipped together in a larger box with reinforced corners and their own boxes inside secondary boxes. For large and expensive items like these, I couldn't ask for a better shipping method. The Stratton itself is a very thin 18 and a half inch square. It comes with a hanging kit and is claimed to light up to a 30 by 30 inch area. Let's see how well that actually works. I put a 30 by 30 inch square on my floor using tape and I set up the light so that it's using the community shallow reef setting for light acclimated corals. The instructions indicate that the Stratton should be hung at least 15 centimeters above the water's surface. So here's what that would look like. My tank is 24 inches deep, so let's raise the light by 24 inches and see what the coverage at the bottom of my tank would then be with the light still 15 centimeters over the water's surface. There are 153 LEDs in a Stratton, and you can control seven colors individually. You can also control the front, middle, and back as a group on their own, which lets you set up some neat effects or tune the lights specifically to the corals you have. It features 18 405 nanometer UV, 18 420 nanometer violet, 18 450 nanometer royal blue, 36 470 nanometer blue, 36 white, 18 500 nanometer cyan, which I would call green, and nine red LEDs. All diodes are rated for five watts, and though we don't know the specific brand used, we do know that they're underdriven at only about 30% of their rated power. So these LEDs should stay cool and last a very long time. I really like that the ATI Stratons come with their own Wi-Fi and controller software built in. For my Radeons, I had to buy a ReefLink, then use an online tool called EcoSmart Live, and then now something called Mobius that never really worked for me. There's a lot that can go wrong there, and even over time, companies come and go. What happens if the company running your tank's software gets bought out? Who knows? I think it's better to have your own controller that doesn't really rely on anything hosted by someone else. One of the first things I noticed when I opened the box was the off-the-shelf Meanwell XLG 224A power supply. This is incredible, and something more companies should do. Unlike the custom power supplies used by many manufacturers, you can easily buy a replacement Meanwell supply for about $45, and they're very high quality. Props to ATI for this choice. They even have built-in surge protection in case your own power strip doesn't offer that protection. Though I wouldn't recommend it, the Meanwell supply is IP67 rated, and that means that it can be submersed in water without issue for short periods of time. This could be a lifesaver in case you splash it under your tank by mistake. 
It also carries a five-year warranty from Meanwell, though you might have trouble actually using that since you don't buy these from Meanwell directly. At the other end of the waterproof spectrum is the ATI controller box itself, which is very close to the power supply and very much not waterproof. The light likely won't light up when you first turn it on. Keep that in mind. You need to connect to a Wi-Fi network that it creates and configure it before the light will work. Alternatively, and something I also really like, you can use an Ethernet cord to connect the controller to your network. So, if you have an Ethernet port handy, that could be an ideal way to connect it where Wi-Fi interference can't cause you any issues. It supports both 10 and 100 megabit Ethernet. The controller itself is pretty sparse, with most of the components being embedded inside the Onion Omega 2 Plus that they're using for the CPU, Wi-Fi, RAM, and for everything else. It supports 2G, 802.11b, G, and N Wi-Fi, and runs OpenWRT Linux by default on a 580 MHz CPU. It features 32 megabytes of flash for disk and 128 megabytes of RAM. So really a pretty capable little computer for building Internet of Things projects with. If you did need to replace the controller, nothing is soldered on, and you can simply pop open the case and unplug the wires and replace the board. One thing to note, if you don't have good Wi-Fi access, and if you also can't run an Ethernet cord, the Omega 2 Plus does have an unused Wi-Fi antenna connector that you could plug something into. So keep that in mind if Wi-Fi under your tank is just barely there. You could add a Wi-Fi antenna easily. The controller website itself is quick and responsive, unless you configure the schedule for your lights. You can also configure new custom colors if you don't like the preset values. And interestingly, you can create groups out of the front, middle, and back of the lights, and then control all of your fixtures from just one of the fixtures' websites. I plan on doing a video all about the controller software itself, but right now I'm still learning it, and I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, so you'll have to watch for that in the future. Another thing I've come to expect from internet-connected devices is endless analytics being sent to who knows where. That doesn't seem to be the case with the ATI Stratton. It's only sending data up when I'm accessing the website for the controller. The web controller software itself also doesn't have Google Analytics or anything like that in it that I could tell. This is nice, but I do wonder, if ATI did have some analytics in these, what would they improve on for V2? I'd be okay with opting into some basic analytics about how the lights and the controller software are used if given the choice. If something goes wrong, you can factory reset the device by holding down a button on the controller until both of the green LEDs near the Ethernet port are solid green. It will then reset back to the factory settings and should start broadcasting its setup Wi-Fi again after a few minutes. Give it time, a full reboot does seem to take a few minutes from start to being available on your home network again. What about PAR? I've seen some comments on Reef to Reef about Acropora photo inhibition, and so I'm doing some research on that. More to come in a future video. Using the shallow reef preset schedule, which has the lights at 90% brightness during the middle of the day, and with my 24 inch tall tank and the light about seven and a half inches over the water, the PAR at the bottom of my tank is around 100 directly under the lights. At the water's surface, it's around 600. I'd like to optimize this schedule some, but it's a good starting off point. I think PAR values between 100 to maybe 300 or 400 are likely to be the best for most Acropora and most of our commonly kept corals, with some soft corals liking even less light. I think 24 inches tall is a good average value for reef tanks, so these lights should be able to provide great light levels to most any tank. I thought perhaps I could get away with just two lights over my 6 foot wide tank. As a reminder, my tank is 6 feet long, 2 feet deep, and 3 feet wide. With the lights mounted towards the ends of my tank and a gap of about 2 feet between the fixtures, par at the bottom of the tank in the very middle is only about 60, so I'll need to get a third fixture. And I'm glad I left space between the lights for that third stratton to be installed. The lights really don't heat up that much at all. They've been running here for several hours now, and the top surface of the light is only 102.1 Fahrenheit. As it has no fans, it's totally silent. An amazing selling point when you're working from home during COVID and the tank is in your office. Really, this is such a difference from the Radeons I had previously. You don't notice the fan noise until it's not there. I can't overstate the difference it makes. 
even more so since I work from home and the tank is in my office. I'll make a follow-up video all about the software. It's pretty feature complete, allowing you to do pretty much whatever you'd want. It automatically connects to other Stratons added to your home network, and all the units are controlled together as one. It's really pretty nice. I'm very happy with these lights so far. I'm waiting on a Triton test to determine if I need to get rid of my existing rock due to any possible copper that might have been absorbed. And as soon as I get those results back, I'm planning on doing a whole new aquascape for the tank. Exciting times for sure. Hopefully this first impressions video was interesting to you. If you have questions about the ATI Stratton, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to answer them, uh, though I do have some limited knowledge at this point. So thanks for watching. Subscribe for the update on the software in a few weeks. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and have a fantastic day. Bye.